All right, let's talk about Zion Johnson. First round pick from the Chargers from a year ago, a guard. Uh, let's talk about what he's done in the NFL so far and what's to make of his rookie season in general. So like first, let's start off with this play. He's going to be going up one-on-one -on -one against a uh, an interior defensive lineman. And I'm starting off with uh, what he does when things go wrong. Because, like, listen, uh, we're going to get into plenty of him, you know, what he could do to avoid having bad situations in general. But one of the things I was relatively impressed with watching his film is how when things go wrong, he tends to still be in pretty good position and tends to not, uh, you know, have anything too bad happen. And this is an example of it. Right when this play begins, you're going to see that the, you know, 99 for the Raiders, he's doing a good job. If he has his right arm kind of on uh, Zion's left shoulder area, that's where he uh, has it. And he's going to just push off and watch. It works. I mean, Zion Johnson is in a tough spot at this point. So, okay, right off the bat, you're looking like this could be immediate pressure up the middle. That's a dangerous situation. Herbert's great at avoiding pressure, but you don't want to force him to avoid pressure if you can get away with, get, get around it. So, you know, what do you do if you're Johnson? Well, you can put your you know, left arm, which is kind of in the area, and, you know, try to just push, uh, grab, put it onto the, uh, you know, left sort of shoulder pad area, more, more of like the pec area of number 99, get your right arm onto his hips, and just push him away from the quarterback. At the end of the day, you just need to give your quarterback time, right? At this point, you're not going to be able to just stop 99 in his tracks, but you can at least slow him down and get him away from Herbert so Herbert has a chance to make a play. And as you see, Johnson does that. He pushes him away and eventually goes to the ground, but did just enough to, avoid, you know, to survive that situation. Again, I'm not showing this play to show a positive. I'm showing this play to show, a, you know, really a negative. It's a bad play. I mean, that's not an ideal scenario for him, but that's why I'm showing it, as it's a play that when he was in a bad situation, he uh, minimized damage. And definitely damage, uh, you know, minimization is a very real part of being a good a guard in the NFL. Like, this play is going to be another very uh, similar example. Because, again, he would get beat. Every guard's going to get beat. Every player gets beat in the NFL unless you're Trent Williams, right? So, what you you got to figure out a way to, you know, uh, avoid having disasters happen when you do get beat. Like this one, for example. It's a one-on-one -on -one matchup. And right when this play begins, again, almost the exact same situation. And, you know, it's kind of nice that it's on the other side of the field now. So, I can give you the different angle of you see really where that you know left arm is. It's not a hold. It's only a hold if you pull, right? It's not going to be a hold just having your arm there. And watch him be able to push aside the, uh, you know, the defensive lineman. And, again, keep him well away from Herbert. Herbert had to do a little bit of work navigating the pocket. But he's Herbert. He's going to do that. You're not too concerned about that situation too much. It's really just good stuff from Johnson. And again, to be clear, like going over to a play like this, there absolutely were plays where he was not getting beat. Like I'm not sh saying that he's getting beat constantly, but just bails himself out. No, like he has very good plays. And this is an example where it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one block. And watch how, as you see, he does a good job of just, again, you know, really easily winning that one-on-one -on -one matchup. This one's kind of another one where, again, uh, you see where he is on the screen and watch what happens. Watch how he really quickly gets the hand placement he wants on the running play and make sure that the interior defensive lineman is just not going to get anywhere near the play on that one. That one's an easy block to make for sure, but still, you got to be able to make it, and he was able to make it. So it's still good stuff, I think, from, uh, from Zion Johnson on that play. Also heading over here, you see that, you know, the way this play works, and this is one of the negatives I definitely saw on his tape, is that, uh, you know, it's it's a double team uh, situation where you're supposed to get off the double team eventually and then get over to block someone at the next level. I feel like these things he kind of, uh, he struggled with a little bit at the NFL level, which is understandable, right? Uh, it's a lot harder to pull off double teams in the NFL, in the NFL than it is in college. It's going to take a little bit of time. But watch how when this play begins, I mean, really, realistically, right now, you should be getting off the double team and getting up to the next level and being able to block someone at the next level, giving your running back room to run through. Uh, it's, you know, that's what you have to do. You have to block the next guy. However, Johnson really didn't finish off that initial double team well enough and also didn't get up to the next level to really fully make that play. I'm not, I'm not saying that's why it was uh, completely stuffed. It wasn't like just because of that or anything like that. But uh, still, these are the kind of things I definitely noticed as what I would consider weaknesses of Zion Johnson's game, in my opinion. So again, there were some small things that uh, definitely were uh, issues. When I remember when I evaluated Zion Johnson, I kind of felt like he was someone who I felt pretty confident was just going to be like an effective guard in the NFL he felt to me like the most like obvious like yeah he'll be a solid player he's not going to be a superstar guard but he probably won't be a bad guard either and through one season that's pretty much what he looked like 
Like, again, looking at his college PFF grades, uh, this is his uh, draft profile from PFF. Uh, so you see his last three years in the NFL, in college, excuse me, before entering the NFL. Uh, you know, an 84.4 grade his final year and his best year, not otherworldly or anything like that. It's nothing special. Um, but one thing you do like is that he improved year after year. So 2019, 2020, and 2021, he consistently improved, which is part of why you feel like he can continue to improve in the NFL. He's you know, still getting better as a player. He, you don't feel like he's peaked yet, I think is totally reasonable to say. And if you look at his uh, PFF page from when he was in the NFL, uh, you know, Better run blocker than pass blocker, which I definitely agree with. I think there were some issues, like I said, kind of immediately, maybe getting to hand placement, not exactly where he wants right away, was a very real thing I saw when I was watching his tape. So a 52.8 pass blocking grade. You'd like to see that get improved a little bit. That's the area where he needs to uh, step up, I would say. The run blocking was solid, though. I have no issue with the run blocking. Uh, 67.2 grade. That's totally fine. One other thing just worth noting on this uh, is, you know, over 1,200 snaps as a rookie. That's an absurdly high amount of snaps. Usually, like, like 1,000 is like, you know, then you had a ton of snaps. So, getting, uh, you know, 12,050, I mean, that's insane. And obviously, there was a playoff game in there as well. But still, I mean, we're talking about a guy who played a lot of football as a rookie. So, if he is someone who can get better, that's the hope is that he can get better. So what do we make of Zion Johnson's rookie season? I mean, listen, there was a very little chance that uh, as a rookie, we were going to come in and say, you know, Zion Johnson completely changes the outlook of the Chargers, right? I mean, there's just, it's, he, you know, he's a guard. There's only so much he can do. And he wasn't like the, you know, he wasn't a first overall pick, right? Uh, he was sort of later in the first round. We kind of knew that at best case scenario, who's going to be helping his team. But, you know, again, the uh, the overall 62.2 pro football focus grade, that put him at uh, 39th out of 77 eligible guards. So you'll certainly take that. I mean, that's a valuable player, and that player you pay a decent amount of money for, uh, you know, uh, what, uh, 39th, that's kind of like a good number two guard, maybe not the guy you want to have as your number one guard, uh, but still very good, and you have to have Corey Lindsley uh, at center, so could use another guard for sure, but, uh, you know, as a whole, that's definitely something that uh, I think that, you know, they feel good about. And there's, again, plenty of reason to believe he could get better. He's 23 now. He was 22 last season. So definitely there's hope to believe that uh, there's, you know, reason to believe that he can get better and continue to grow for the Los Angeles Chargers. And I, I, I do think that he will. So yeah, again, Chargers in a very interesting spot this upcoming season. They you know, got Quentin Johnson, uh, another you know, guy with the last name of Johnson, uh, and you know, that offense could potentially, if it stays healthy next year, be an incredible offense with Williams, Allen, uh, and Johnson. Got to make sure to have time to throw. And I think Zion Johnson didn't give up a lot of immediate pressures or anything like that. He gave up some pressures, but it wasn't a disaster. He looked solid as a rookie. And so for year two, we could see if he could take that next step forward and play even better. So yeah, those are my thoughts on Zion Johnson. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. What do you think about him and what he brings to the Chargers? Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.